welcome to the Knife Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing interests you, feel free to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified anytime I might feel like making a new video for you. And if you find value in this video, hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow and I sure do appreciate it. Today, we are participating in Jam It Up June collaboration hosted by Kettle Kitchen. And you want to be posting your comments in this video and every other video that's participating in this collaboration. There are some fabulous prizes that will be given away on Kettle Kitchen's giveaway at the end of the month. Talking about canning lids and stock pots and steam canners. You don't want to miss out on this great collaboration. So let's get jamming. Today we are making strawberry lemonade marmalade. Say that 10 times fast. And since I'm busy baking for a bake sale tomorrow, do I have time to make jam, but my fruit is getting ripe? No fear. We have the bread machine coming to save the day. You say what? It's very important that you only make jam and jelly in the bread machine that has a specific and unique jam or jelly setting. The operation of the paddle and the temperature settings are unique for jams and jellies and it's difficult to improvise with any other setting. Bread machines with the jam and jelly feature have bread pans that have a unique bearing under the kneading paddle. This prevents liquid from leaking through the paddle bearing and onto the machine. You can ruin your machine or at least face it and pose cleaning up task if a pan of fruit and sugar leak into the bottom of your bread pan. You could short out if any liquids encounter any electrical connections. So make sure your bread pan can hold water. I would just simply place water into your pan and let it sit on the counter for about 20 minutes to make sure it doesn't leak. If you're for not familiar with how a bread machine actually works, it has a knead cycle which will act as a mixing cycle for your jam. Then it also has a bake setting which will actually cook your jam or your fruit to the proper temperature it needs without any guesswork. Before you get started, make sure you wash your fruit, especially the peel of the lemon. They put a wax on it before they get it to the grocery store just so they last longer. And with strawberries, you want to take a gentle flow of water, cold water, and make sure you're gentle with them because they will bruise. The ripeness of any fruit is very important. You don't want fruits that are not ripe or too ripe. They need to be just right. This is fairly simple with strawberries and other berries, but the challenge can be with mangoes, kiwis, and peaches. If the fruit you have on hand doesn't feel ripe, consider making a different flavor or just wait a few days. You should also only use fruit juice that is 100% juice. Too many fruit juices have added water and sugar. This can compromise your results. So stick with 100% juice. Pectin or gelatin is also important when juice is the main ingredient. The quality of your fruit needs to be pristine. You can't have any bad spots or mold for obvious reasons. It will degrade the quality of your product. For the recipe today, I'm using the Ball website's recipe for strawberry lemon marmalade. And the directions say you need a chopped or crushed four cups of fruit. So I'm gonna use my vegetable dicer to make sure the fruit is the size that it needs to be. According to the National Center for Food Home Preservation, when you're preparing your fruit, you should either mash it with a potato masher or finely chop it. If you do any other method of crushing it, you might create air into your product and it would change the velocity, which will result in a different product altogether. Now we need to prepare the lemon peel. I'm just going to take my vegetable peeler and just peel the rind off. And hopefully it lands on the cutting board. And you don't want the pith because that will be better. We need about a quarter cup of lemon peel, which is about two lemons. Ooh, slickery little bugger. I'm going to cut this in half and quarter it and put it in my water bottle with some strawberry and have that as a nice beverage. 
sounds delightful. And if you want to not cut yourself because your peeler is really sharp, invest in a cutlass glove. I know I love my cutlass glove just because maybe I should be wearing it because this peeler is really sharp. They say once you cut yourself, you'll learn, huh? And what you're going to do is just go along and take your sharp knife and make strips. And if you want, cut that smaller. Took my grip and call, do the bear call and just, all right, so we're gonna put this in a pot and boil it for at least five minutes or until soft. We're gonna measure out a quarter cup of that. And this is my grandmother's old measuring cup. Isn't it cute? I accidentally put it in the dishwasher once and now it's tarnished. All right. Then we'll cover this with water to bring it to a boil and it will smell really good. Make sure you boil over medium high heat. Once the lemon peel is softened, we're going to drain off the water. All right. Since this is a bread machine recipe, you just want to dump and go. So we're going to add our lemon peel, our strawberries, one tablespoon of bottled lemon juice and make sure you're using the stuff you buy from the store. The acidity level in each lemon is different so the acidity level in the bottled lemon juice is guaranteed to be safe. Then I'm going to mix the six cups of sugar to the six tablespoons of pectin. That way it's already incorporated before it gets into the bread machine. Since this is a dump and go recipe I'm going to put my six tablespoons of pectin along with my six cups of sugar into a bowl and mix them well before adding it to the bread machine. All right, and we're just gonna stir that together. Then we're just gonna dump that into the pan. And we'll add the pan to the bread machine. And since I still have baking to do, I'm just going to put it on the island and we're going to select number 14 and hit start. And in 10 minutes, it'll be for me to scrape down. Then at 15 minutes, in, it'll scrape, be to scrape down. So I, I highly stress if you're canning it, get out of the bread machine right away and get the ladling into jars. But if you're going to just refrigerate the jam, let it cool down for 30 minutes before you remove it from the bread machine, just for safety precautions. We're ready to rock and roll. We got our jars in a canner, getting hot. We got our hot sippy lids cleaned and rinsed. We washed and sanitized this, we washed that. We got our paper towels, our rings. We're all ready to rock and roll. All right. You want to grab a jar, a funnel, and ladle your marmalade into the jar slowly because this stuff is hot. Make sure you get that quarter inch head space. All right. 
We're going to debubble. This jam is so pretty looking. And measure our cordage headspace. And then we're going to wipe our rim. And make sure you change the position on your towel every time you wipe the rim you don't know what might have collected on the last jar. All right, then you want to put your lid on and your ring. Then you're going to place it in the canner. Can't stress that enough. It is screaming hot. You do not want three degree burns. Trust me. Ask me how I know. I've burnt myself many times in fast food. All right, quarter inch headspace, debubble. Wipe your rim. You got your canning lid and your ring. Fingertip tight, and into the canner we go. All right, I got almost eight jars. You're supposed to get seven. So I'm gonna let this sit on the counter till it sets. Then I'll put it in the refrigerator. I found out last week it will not set if you just put it straight into the refrigerator. So this is automatically going to go in your wash sink and wash right away. You do not want to wait on that. It'll grow tight. And what's the worst part about canning? The dishes. So we'll lower our jars into the water. And I take this handy dandy measuring ruler and actually see if I have the right amount of water. You should have one and a half inches to two inches of water. So we're good on that. And I'll put the lid on, I have it on medium high heat, and we'll wait till it comes to a rolling boil. Another thing to keep in mind when you're canning is what elevation you are located at. I'm at 859 feet, so I can process for 10 minutes. When your 10 minutes is up, you want to remove the lid, turn the burner off, and set another timer for 5 minutes. That will allow the jars to cool down slowly versus rapidly. When pulling the jars out of the canner, it's important not to tilt the jars as you're lifting the jar with the jar lifter. The water will evaporate and if you tilt it, there's a likely that it will not seal properly due to the fact that it might have syrup coming out the edges. So just let the jar do its thing and let the water evaporate off the top of the lid and let your jars sit for 12 to 24 hours then you want to wash them and label what they are and put them in a cool dark place until it's time to open that jar and use it for something wonderful whether it be a cake or top it with ice cream thanks so very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the content of this channel and if you haven't yet go ahead and subscribe like and share. Here is another great video that you might enjoy. Take care and God bless.